Hey guys, welcome back. This is going to be part three of our F250 GT45 turbo build. Today we're going to be tapping the oil pan, running the drain line, and running the uh, feed line. Guys, this is going to be part three of our uh, turbocharger build. Today we're going to work on some oil lines. I think first we're going to work on the uh, drain. Went, and took, went ahead and took the unit back out of the truck so it was easier to get the uh, fittings on the bottom side there. I lost my gasket so I'm kind of hoping this high temp silicone will do a good job for me. Hoping this drain hose is going to get me all the way down to the oil pan but I'm starting to have my doubts. It looks a little short. Let's see how it goes. I don't know if I ever showed you where I'm bolting this down to, but there's a bolt. There's already a hole here and already a hole here, and that's where I've been bolting everything down to. All right, so we're bolted back in again now. You can kind of see my line run to the bottom of the engine there. And as you can see, it is too short. Right, until I can get a new drain line, Maybe I'll go ahead and try to tap the oil pan. When I used to do this back on old uh, pushrod V8s, like 302s, 351s, I'd always go through the side of the oil pan. I couldn't get a good shot of it here, but if you look under your truck, if you're doing it on this kind of truck, the K member is just, it's not accessible. Uh, this is the piece I always used on the old small blocks. It's a 3.8 NPT to a uh, dash 10. A in. So I started looking at the 4.6 liter. So I started looking at the 4.6 liter Mustang guys. It seems like they, this is the oil pan here. Looks like those guys are just going straight through the front of it, which is a heck of a lot more accessible on this truck than going through the side. So I think that's what I'm going to do also. 5.4 and the 4.6 are very similar engines, so I would assume it'll work just fine here, but we'll find out. Uh, so here's the hole I got made. The idea here is you want to get... You don't want to just drill a hole through it, and you want to be able to push the metal back into the oil pan, so you've got enough meat there to put your threads into to hold your pipe fitting. I don't know if you can see it or not, but you just want to essentially make, just like make a mini tunnel there. Because if you just cut a hole straight through it, you won't have anything to put your threads into. This is a 9 16 hole, and we're going to put, uh, we're going to tap it for 3 8 uh, NPT fitting. So here's the tap we're going to use. See there, it's a uh... Maybe you can see it. 3 8 NPT. When you do this, make sure you pack the uh, flutes of this with grease so that way when, you, uh, when you're tapping it, the metal shards, flakes, whatever you want to call them, they stick to the tap and not fall down into your oil pan. And I usually clean it off a couple times during the process just so I know it's fresh grease and it's collecting all the material. So here's what I was telling you about the grease catching the uh, metal shards. It does a pretty good job at it. Although uh, I would say it's probably not a bad idea once you get your drain hose hooked up to it, just dump a quart of oil down it, 
and change your oil right after this just for good measure but I'll uh, show you what uh, looks like when I'm done here hopefully you can see that but I've got it all threaded for my fitting now so uh, we'll go ahead and thread that in next and that's what it looks like installed So until I get a longer oil return line, maybe we'll try and work on the oil supply line. Let's see it there, but... That wire you see hanging down right underneath the pipe there. There it is. That's our sending unit. So we're gonna have to pull that out. Had to make a, another run to Lowe's to get some stuff I didn't have. I just kind of go through all these extra parts that I bought. A bunch of fittings. And I probably won't be able to show you how this looks when I get it installed, so I'll just show you now. This end over here is what connects to our turbocharger for the oil feed. And the kit I bought came with this feed line, it came with this block and these two uh, fittings. So I'm just going to cap one of them off. Then I've got a series of fittings here that go to our oil uh, pressure sending unit. I just went ahead and bought a new one since it's all apart. And this end here is what's going to bolt or thread into the block. And I had to put an elbow on it because I think it's going to hit the uh, engine cradle if I don't. But that's what it looks like in case I can't show you later. It might be hard to see here, but this connection here is where we're going to reinstall our uh, oil pressure. I've got the cap on this side over here. And this side here is the uh, feed line for the turbocharger. Find the rest of our line here. What we're going to do is take this end, thread it in the top of the turbocharger, and uh, show you what that looks like when I get that done. And there's that. So it turns out I did have some 5 8 hose laying around that'll work on this uh, dash 10 fitting. A good shot here, maybe. But anyway, there's the uh, the hose I've got running down there. We're gonna have to put some uh, extra piece of pipe there so that doesn't uh, rub a hole in it. And I'll. Uh, go down the stairs and I'll show you what it looks like when it's hooked up to the oil pan. So there's that 3 8 to uh, dash 10 adapter on the oil pan. Then we've got a 45 degree bend and that black hose just goes straight up to the oil drain on the turbocharger. Pretty well takes care of the oiling system. So we just went through that whole mess of uh, oil hoses and oil lines and fittings and next time I think we might check out the uh, mess of exhaust tubing that we're going to need. Catch you next time.